Hi class, welcome to the second YouTube video of Accounting 211. Are you guys ready for some fun? I know I am. And guess what? I learned to work on my video editing skills. Now look what I can do. <laughs> oh boy, the things I do for you guys. <sighs> okay, nothing but serious accounting for the rest of this episode. The last time we did this, we tackled chapter 2. This time, we're going to try and tackle chapters 3 and 4, giving you one question from each of those chapters. So, you're going to need a notebook, a pen, and possibly a calculator too to help you out with the mathematical calculations. So, with that all set up, let's get cracking. For the first question, I'd like you guys to calculate the predetermined overhead rate based off the data I give you. So, here is your data. Yeah, I'm still here. Dude, just read it over real quick. Um, these are the estimated costs at the start of the period that the company plans to incur. Got it? All right, now with this data, I would like you to calculate the predetermined overhead rate. The other thing that you will probably want to know for this question is that this company bases their manufacturing overhead amounts based off of direct labor hours. So with that, you should have enough information to calculate the predetermined overhead rate. You can pause your video now, I'll get back to you in three seconds and we'll go over it. Alrighty, let's do this. And the answer is $2.50 per direct labor hour. And you get that by taking the indirect materials, the rent on the factory, and the factory supervisor salary. Those together add up to be your estimated total manufacturing overhead. And that's going to be the numerator in your predetermined overhead rate calculation. The denominator is going to be the 128,000 of estimated direct labor hours. Divide those two numbers out and you're going to get $2.50. Well done. Okie dokie, now that we got chapter 3 done, let's move on to chapter number 4. So let's jump into the question now, shall we? The following data was taken from a company's accounting records. At the beginning of the month, there were no units in work and process inventory and 150,000 units in finished goods inventory. The company sold 500,000 units during the month. At the end of the month, there was 32,000 units that were 75% complete in work and process inventory. And finally, there was 120,000 units in finished goods inventory at the end of the month. So with all this data I just gave you, I want you guys to calculate the equivalent units of production for conversion costs for the month. Go. Okay, so this one wasn't an easy one by any means, so let's see how you guys did. This one started off by being tricky because I didn't give you guys the units transferred out. And it's actually a little bit of a difficult calculation to get to. So I give you guys the units sold of 500,000, and I also gave you guys the units in finished goods inventory at the end of the month of 120,000. If you add those two together, you're going to get 620,000. And that 620,000 equals the total units that you need to account for at the end of the period. And now that you guys know how to do a cost reconciliation report from the chapter, you know that the costs accounted for at the end of the period are equal to the costs to be accounted for during the period. And therefore, we know that the cost to be accounted for during the period is also equal to 620,000. So with that in mind, you can get to the final step in calculating the units transferred out. You're going to take that 150,000 of beginning work in process, add it to the units transferred in, which we don't know, and that's going to equal the 620,000 of costs to be accounted for. So, do some algebra, and you end up with 470,000 in units transferred in. But calculating the units transferred is only half the battle to figuring out the equivalent units of production. You still have to add to that the equivalent units of work in process inventory. 
Now remember, there was 32,000 units in ending working process inventory, and they were 75% complete. So, you're going to have to multiply the 32,000 by the 75%. That'll get you 24,000, and then you're going to want to add that 24,000 to the 470,000 of cost transferred to get your grand total of 494,000. So that's all I got for today. Hopefully I was able to give you guys a few challenging problems to uh, get you ready for some of the other assignments that you'll be tackling this semester. Thanks again for watching. Keep studying hard and uh, have a great week.